Hello, Instagram Live. It's Deborah. It's the Guilty Feminist and it's the new normal. Uh, so uh, Instagram is just about to tell me who's on and who is watching today. Thank you so much for joining us every day. It's been lovely and the reaction's been lovely and the messages we've been getting are lovely. We're putting them all up on YouTube. We're also releasing those podcasts on Acast. Uh, so you can check them out there. Today, my very special guest is Jade Adams. I'm so excited. So I'm just waiting for a few more people to come on before I introduce Jade because I don't want people to miss her entrance because she is nothing if not a woman who can give a spectacular entrance. If you've ever been to a musical, nobody really does an entrance like Jade. So I'm very, very excited. Um, here she is. She's waving. She's waving. I think it's time. It's time. Here we go. Uh, I'm pressing the right things. Here we go. Go live with. Go live with. Jade. All right. Let's see the entrance. Very excited. In three, two, one. In three, two. I feel strongly that it's, it says it's connecting. I feel we're going to be seeing her. I just had, uh, while I'm waiting for Jade to connect, and I feel it's, it's going to happen any second, I just went into the downstairs loo to find one of the And like a tiny terrorist had ripped up the loo roll, which was all over the floor. Now, I, it's hard to explain to a cat why this is absolutely not funny in a pandemic where one thing you cannot get is loo roll. It's so precious. It's like going in and finding they've ripped up 50 pound notes. I cannot actually believe that they've ripped up, they've ripped up loo roll. I mean, we're gonna have to use it anyway, let's be honest. Okay, we're trying again with Jade. Here we go, add. Let's see, it says we're waiting. Let's go again in three, two, one connecting i believe it come on ms jade adams where are you i might have to call tom in a second someone says turn the roll the ring way okay yes that's a good idea i might have to our cats do that too uh we had to put it in a cupboard that's cats for you evil creatures somebody says here come on now uh jade is saying hang on i don't know what hang on means else has happened if someone's tipped over your hand sanitizer uh on a uh, on this week's episode of the guilty feminist that we just released which we recorded in wellington in february uh cal wilson tells a very funny story about how she was so tired when she was breastfeeding and she had to go into a radio show every morning and, and she was having to pump this milk and she was driving home and her husband rang her distraught like crying saying i'm really sorry i've got terrible news and she thought oh my god like something's happened to the baby and he said i've knocked over some breast milk and they were both crying her with the car pulled over and she realized that they were both crying over spilt milk and she started laughing <laughs> uh, it's a great episode actually it's got some really poignant things in it i do a speech about being fatigued and, and for tiredness and feminism that's like quite prescient there's a lot of hijinks comedy, just lols, just super lols, which we need. It feels like a night out, which we need at the moment. If you close your eyes, you can feel like you're on a night out because there's 2,000 people in the audience. But also, um, there's a, a lot of lovely talk about uh, sex toys, which isn't irrelevant. Isn't irrelevant in a time when it's pretty much illegal to hook up unless you're quarantined with somebody you fancy. Uh, okay, so it looks like Jade has sent a request here. Let's go and view that request. Okay, we're going to try and going live with Jade based on this request. And in three, two, oh, one. Okay, we do not seem to be connecting very easily to Jade. Uh, so I might need to have to ask Tom. Uh, hey! <gasps> it's an entrance! Look at that spectacular entrance. Oh my God, I'm doing a screenshot of this right now. What a headdress. You were the only one who's come with a headdress. <laughs> when, <laughs> Kiri, when Kiri came on the other day, I had a sequined hood because I didn't trust her not to wear a, a sequined outfit. This though is unprecedented. Well, I, I heard you saying Jade Adams always makes an entrance and I was like, all I had on was my high risk jumper. 
Oh. Um, so I um I decided that I I'd, right next to me I had my mannequin head that had it on and I was like fuck it I'll put it on so nice this is my entrance and I put a bit of lippy on as well whilst I was trying to make the uh, Wi-Fi work. So impressive that is an entrance and a half. Uh, I will post a picture of it so uh, but actually and if you're in case you're listening to this on a podcast but most of you will be seeing it live and you will be uh, you or seeing it in the stories and you will be as blown away as I am by, I mean, that looks like real flowers. Are they real flowers or are they artificial? So they are artificial. I bought them from a an Instagram account, uh, which, because I pi paid for it, I'm not going to advertise the in Instagram account because it was quite pricey. Um, uh -huh. I, um, I, I I saw it on, on Instagram and she, this is the only one of its kind and these are all vintage <laughs> flowers from the 50s. Wow. Um, and uh, she she made it and I um, and I bloody bought it. And, uh, and it, I... I love it and I've, been, I've seen all the um all the sort of uh women do their pregnancy announcements where they dress like the virgin mary um, yes i wanted to have my very own pregnancy announcement but without the baby <laughs> yes yeah because let's be clear a baby in this sitch uh is is uh i don't want to be quarantined with a baby but if you are quarantined with a baby I hope you're having a lovely time. I'm sure there's a lot of comfort in it, like with my pets. So I was just saying my cats ripped up my loo roll. Annoying. But then they are lovely to stroke. So I imagine babies are both annoying and also an enormous, gorgeous, okay. loving comfort in this time. Well, I spoke to, I spoke to a friend of mine the other day who's uh, lo who, who's looking after. So not only has loads of work to do at the moment, which is great for him. Him and his wife work together as well, but they've had a uh, they've had they've got a child, and they're not only doing all their work, they're having to do full time childcare and be a teacher and do all of this stuff. And the idea that there's these parents, because I like I, if I had a kid who wanted to know what like you had to do trigonometry homework with a child, oh no, like, I would have no idea whatsoever how to teach a child. I remember. No. I've been, I, I was a teacher one time. I, I had to do a drama class and it went so badly. I got to the <laughs> like, basically one of the kids bit the other child and I didn't oh, wow. support it. And, and I, I, cause I just wanted to carry on with the class. I w had no experience of teaching whatsoever. I had a CRB check and that was about it. I, wow. I, I'm never going to teach. I'm, I'd be terrible at it. I, I like teaching growing up. So I do like teaching children from time to time, but I wouldn't want to have to teach children I was quarantined with. Because, you know, and listen, the people that are doing it are doing it marvellously. And some people are saying, you know, you know, it's 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 funny for a bit relentless. Some people are saying, oh, my God, I'm not even doing that. I love Shappy Sandy, who said, I'm just not doing it. If Vivi wants to be a lawyer, she can be a lawyer three months later than planned. <laughs> and I was like, That's a great attitude to it. Like it's, you know, we we constantly like everything's got to be kept up. They'll learn if you talk to them, if you read to them, if you play with them, if you engage with them in other ways. I really do believe that. Yeah, I and, it as well. And however you're doing it, you're doing it the way you can cope. Yeah, you're doing it the right it. way. Whether you're just saying, run around the house feral and enjoy some freedom which you would never get under any other circumstances, or whether you're sitting down every day and doing Google Classroom with them, you're doing it the right way for you. And... Uh, what I do think is the applause that the NHS got, which was so moving, is will be as nothing as to the applause the teachers will get when those children go back to school and the parents come out and go, thank you for taking them back. Love them. <laughs> All those people are going to get paid more, I truly believe it. And then that will pale, in my mind, compared to the applause that the waxers will get post-quarantine. <laughs> Because those, cause those, those women who wax, and they are normally women, will be on 22-hour shifts. They will be the new emergency services when my we get beard, out of here. My beard is insane right now. I mean, what are we going to do at some point? We are, I mean, we're just leaning into it. But at some point, I am going to have to shave because I like everything waxed and smooth. This but, is why I'm a feminist butt for you. Oh, I'm, great. I'm a feminist butt. As soon as I can get into a salon, I am having this beard ripped out from my chin. It is, it's insane. We had the sun coming in earlier on and it just absolutely brought a shadow onto the rest of the house. I mean, I do wonder where it's going to lead. And I, I, and I think it's all right to want to be smooth as long as you know what it's like to let it all grow out. And then you decide that's what you want. But I have done all the things and what I like is a smooth feel. 
I ha I'm a, a very unlikely woman. I've actually got very hairy armpits. Oh. A lot of people are always surprised about me having hairy armpits, but I have. They're very hairy. That's the only thing I still shave because it just takes two seconds. I don't like it being, someone tried to wax it once. It was horribly painful. I was like, no, what are you doing? I can just go, bip, 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 bip. but the legs, you've got to get around the corners. The bikini, no, no. I don't want to be down there with the razor. I can't see. It's all the underneath that I have a problem with. <laughs> Unless uh, someone, who was it who told me they had a story? I don't know. Someone told me the story once that he, it was a friend of mine and he'd had a, a, a sort of a, a sexual evening with a lady. <laughs> <laughs> a sexual evening with a lady. He's got a sexual evening with a lady. And she uh, had decided that she wanted to shave and she'd never done it before, but she shaved the wrong bit. So she shaved all of the top bit and left the underneath. <laughs> Jessica Foster Q did that. She was with a bot. She tells the story in stand up that, and she's done up on the girl's phone. that she, she shaved around the top, and then he thought, oh, it's all, you know, that's her choice. She's gone very, and then underneath it was all still there. Excellent. I just think I, if you can find a guy that's like, do you know what? That's just her choice. That's 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 a that's a nice guy. I mean, they they're all they all should be fucking grateful they're down there at all. <laughs> in well, my, my opinion boyfriend, my boyfriend rich wilson said to me because i was doing a lot of shaving when we when we first started having sexual relations i was doing a lot of shaving and he said to me sexual evenings said, uh our sexual evenings sexual evenings me, <laughs> a sexual <laughs> evening a sexual evening with the lady I'm when so he first started having you. sexual evenings with this lady yes continue <laughs> I'm such a prude. Um, he, uh, when we started having our sexual evenings with each other, he said to me, he said to me, um, you know, you don't have to do all that stuff. He just said, you don't, you know, you, I don't mind. I don't, I, and I was the, he's actually the first man that I has ever said that. I know there's plenty that have probably thought it and don't care that I've had sexual relations with, but he was the first one to go, I don't, I don't, I don't mind. I don't mind at all. Wow. And did you stop or do you like the smoothness for you? No, I've stopped completely. Nothing shaved whatsoever. I mean, I get rid of my chin hair and also the natural monobrow that, look, at it, it's, got, it's coming mm -hmm. back. It's well, I worry about this is going to, yeah, this is going to start growing in soon. I'm just going to, the thing is, I'll have more time to do it with tweezers. And my, most of the time, the pace of life is, but, but, but I don't have time to sit there tweezing out every hair. But when you're not allowed to go anywhere, although I'm working very hard and I feel like I'm, at the moment, I'm in a very intense period because I'm trying to work out how everything I do in life goes online and how I cope with quarantine, all of that. But once I'm in more of a rhythm of that, I probably will have time to sit there in the evening in front of Bojack Horseman with a magnifying mirror and a, and a strong light going, that's, that's what I'll do. That's what I'll do. That's what I'll do. That's what I'll do. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I'm now going <laughs> to ask you a question. Um, do you have any coping strategies for keeping yourself emotionally and mentally stable? Because quarantine is not, a normal state for us or and you know some people say well I'm an introvert I like to stay indoors but there's a difference between liking to and the government telling you you're only allowed legally to walk out of your front door once a day unless you're getting emergency supplies that is different for everybody how are you coping Jade well I'd say that the strongest sensation I've had so normally when I would lose this much work in such a short amount of time it would send me into a freelancer panic that I'm not relevant anymore mm. but one of the most comforting things I've had is the first time in my life because I've experienced loss before but it was very private loss so mm -hmm. I lost my sister and mm -hmm. when I lost her I felt very alone because no one else had gone through that experience again but however this 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 feeling, this mass loss that everyone's gone through, whether it's whether it's work or it's money or it's it's experiences or it's weddings uh, or it's or or unfortunately people that are losing relatives, it there's this feeling that I have that I I've I felt I've never felt so relaxed physically because I know I have nowhere to be. So this idea, and I know that everyone else. So there's no FOMO. There's no fear of missing out. Everyone yes. else. Is going through the same thing and I'm not talking 
just this country or this, this city or this country. Every single person in the entire world has been affected by this and everyone is going through mm -hmm. a, 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 a feeling that's been, a, that it's like this big old knife that's been shoved through human existence and it's going, it's going to affect everyone oh. and nothing is ever going to be the same again. Yes, I agree. Can you see me, Jade? Because some people are saying on here, you're very blurry and you should change the internet. Oh, um, oh you're quite, you're, you're slightly blurry, but I can still see you moving. Okay. Um, Tom, just, I'm just sorry, Jade, I'm just going to pause you for one second. Uh, is the internet, is something wrong with the internet? Because some people are finding me blurry. Um, so I'm just going to pause you for one second. Jade, could you just busk while Tom sorts out my internet? So yeah. you do a bit of, do a bit of whatever, tap dance, stand up. Um, I mean, I could take you over. four songs and um Hi, Tom. Uh, oh yes please. i know how to do four songs guys let's do a little song. so we're actually going to cut Come now on. to the bit where i ask can you show us something in your house so you're going to show us your piano i've got a piano so my mum and dad when i was younger so i i don't have a musical family but when i was younger my mum sent me to a nicer school because she didn't want us to go to the rough school so it's not a private school but we went to a really nice comprehensive that we had to go to church for seven years to get into so we used to go to sunday school right and we got into this school and it had a really great music department and mm. i made friends with these two nerds who, who were very good at music and they taught me how to care about something other than freestyle disco dancing which is what i did for years and i um sat and watched my best friend joe play piano for a year and then i learned how to play piano and i invited my mom and dad to the summer serenade and whilst we were there they thought i'd be like singing in the choir but actually what i did was sit down and i played my heart will go on from titanic and my mum cried and about a week later i came home and they bought me this clavinova <gasps> wonderful and they are, they were, they, I've had this for my, I've had this for 20 years. Wow. Um, it's beautiful. It's so old fashioned. It has a floppy disk drive. Nice. Three pedals as well. Nice. Oh, it's dusty it is. Um, it's proper piano. Um, and it's got weighted keys and I've had it and it's only ever had to be fixed once. Fantastic. Fantastic. So the song that uh, that they, I, I, this is, I mean, I always play this. So if I do apologise if anyone's seen it before, but my heart will go on. It's been eighty-four years. <laughs> I can still smell the fresh paint. <laughs> the had never been used. The sheets had never been slept in. The Titanic was called the ship of dreams. <laughs> and it, was, it really was. There you are. That's There's a little fall. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Everybody send applause, please. Send applause claps in oh, the uh, in the box. Yes, people are sending applause. So that's something lovely we've seen of yours. Um do you, I'm asking you. I'm asking everyone the same questions, Jade. Do you have any routine? Is there any way of dividing your day up that you so sort of says, "Oh, that's the morning. That's done now," or "I'm ending my day here"? Or is there anything you do? So, I wake up at about ten o'clock. I then go and I go to the toilet, and then I find my phone and I look at the things that I have to accomplish during the day. So, so my I've still got people that are acquiring things out of me. Um, so oh, I, stuck. Have, I have a little look of, of things that I need to accomplish and yes. then I'll have a bowl of cereal, which is a new thing because I never used to eat cereal. I have a bowl of cereal and then I will make sure that I fill this bottle up here. So this bottle gets filled with water and then nice. I, and I put 10 grams of vitamin C powder and then throughout the whole day I drink this bottle with the vitamin C powder because my friend Gabby is a naturopath. Oh, you're back. Uh, my friend Gabby, who's a naturopath, she told me that we, when we take vitamin C tablets, it, 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 it sometimes the absorption doesn't happen because it's all in one go and you, you'll actually urinate some of the vitamins out. So what I do is I spend all day drinking 10 grams of vitamin C and I, I've done that because I've been told that that boosts your immune system. So that's done. 
I will then uh, maybe make a juice for everyone. So we're staying. We we decided to take a risk and we took our friend Paul in, who's a comedian and actually, funnily enough, our barber. <gasps> um, I'm so lucky. I'm so you dreamboat. I if we ever have to go into lockdown again, and I know we're going to know it's coming next time. We're going to know the signs. I by that time wish to have a place with enough spare rooms that I can invite in rent free and I'll pay for their services. <laughs> Someone who could do hair, makeup and ideally teach yoga. If that's one person, that would be awesome. Okay. But if it was a number of people, I would, I'm just, I might have to move further out of London, but I want a big, if this is going to happen more routinely, if this is something, maybe it's just a one off, but if it is something where we're going to go back in and out or, you know, there's going to be different reasons for this coming up, different kind of viruses over the years. That will be my dream. I'm going to have a home TV studio. I'm going to have to move right out of London for this. I'm going to have to move to the Isle of Wight. Probably the real yeah. estate are expensive. The Outer Hebrides. I have my own TV studio inside so that I can have personal training and stuff. <laughs> and I'm going to invite a series of influencers in my huge Out of Hebrides house to come and lock down with me. Isn't That's that a good idea? That's such a good plan. Well, we sort of half did it because we brought in our, we brought him in, I, I, I'll joke that we brought him in so he can cut our hair, but we brought him in because we didn't want him to be on his own. Um, mm. And because uh, he lives on his own and his girlfriend's from New York, so she's not here with us. So I, I we just thought you should come to us. Um, but also he gets to cut our hair and he, you know, I, I tell you what, it stopped. If me and my boyfriend had to be quarantined this long, we probably would have killed each other by now, but we're on our best behaviour as well. Because we've That's got... the thing about someone else being there. You can't just do the huge meltdowns. No, you can't do that because he's here and we don't want to embarrass ourselves completely whilst he's here. But haven't you got... St doesn't, is Steve quarantined with you? Steve went to the country to stay with friends. And so oh. he's with lots of... No, it's good because he's with lots of uh, lovely young people and they've got outdoors where because they've got because they're in the country they can go outside every day they can walk around as much as they want without leaving you know where they what are and without bumping into anyone what about the kitten so we've got three cats here um but i don't think that makes us any more sane if i'm honest with you <laughs> i think tom and i with three cats i mean we're verging into but i don't i mean i don't mind i'm so much less worried about people thinking i'm sane these days I mean, they can think what they want. It doesn't, I don't think they're thinking about me at all. It's a, it's a global pandemic. Nobody's questioning it. Um, do you, have you had a dark thought or a low moment in all of this that you would be able to share with us? Because this is the p part of the show where people find it a very, I think we're all live streaming ourselves, drinking margaritas and, you know, we're on house party going, yeah, it's all great. But most days, most people, um, have a really low moment and we of course we don't televise that of course we're not live streaming that uh so so this is a reassuring part for other people is there anything you can tell us about either a thought that you've had or a feeling you've had or anything that's happened I'm so just put it turning unattractive over head light off so uh yesterday uh morning i woke up and i felt a lot of pressure because before all of this happened something that's constantly in a lot of conversations and also my chat does his own podcast and one of the conversations about mental health and one of the conversations that constantly comes up on his podcast is uh this conversation about um uh is this conversation about how social media is really affecting our mental health because mm -hmm. people are constantly putting up the best versions of themselves and even when they're putting like what they think is the worst versions of themselves they're getting a lot of applause for it so we're in mm -hmm. it social media is this world where you get applause for your flaws but actually it, it it's still it's still a place where you can feel the w jealousy and you can feel you can feel like you, you you can feel not connected to stuff and what's happened is we've all gone into quarantine and the thing that we're connected now most to is we're, we're putting more social media in our life than we've ever put into our life so yesterday it all just got too much for me and i felt loads of pressure i felt like i had to sort of because i've had every I, you know i've had all my gigs taken away from me i don't know if i'm mm. that funny if i don't have an audience in front of me mm. and i just woke up yesterday morning and I cried and I, mm. I felt I was like what's all this stuff I'm doing why am I oh, you know like I don't want to be sat I don't want to be play acting I don't want to be sat at home putting stuff online it doesn't feel real mm. like I want to be able to go into meetings and put on an outfit I want to wear pants and a bra whilst I'm like I'm not wearing pants and a bra right now Deborah like, <laughs> I want to, like I don't know whether it's all that stuff that makes me feel like I'm a proper human being but I yesterday I just felt I just felt 
like it was just it was just intense and i'm putting on a cabaret show next week and uh on my on my facebook account and i just and i was putting it all together and i just felt silly i just felt stupid like what what am i doing like mm. why why am i doing this what well, i should just be like relaxed but then i, I was like i can't relax because this this mm. job doesn't stop like t the tv world just doesn't stop and and like things haven't just stopped like things are still mm. happening so yeah yesterday i had a real I had a thought yesterday that it was all too much and I couldn't and I couldn't do this and I and I won't be able to do this from my house and then I I put a few other wheels in motion so I I decided to ignore my voice for a moment and I sent an email I just sent one email to do with the thing that I was struggling on which was putting this cabaret show together and I just sent one email to someone else and I got a positive response from that email and then that made me go oh, okay no actually I can do this mm. so it was just I, I, it's just, it's just, there's just, there's pressure, but now I don't have my confidence buoyed when I get on a train and I go in and I go into London and I have official meetings with people where I, I'm made to feel like I'm actually doing something well with my life. I, mm -hmm. I now have to muster up all this, this confidence sat at my desk mm. without my pants on. And I, and I have to, I, cause you, cause we all have in this job, you'll know it. We all have imposter syndrome. We all feel like we've, we've blanked our way into mm. this and, and, that is a constant feeling but those meetings we have in london and, and the gigs we do at the soho theater and all of that stuff stops that those voices but all that stuff's gone so what are mm -hmm. we sat here we're on social media we're comparing ourselves constantly with each other about how other people are coping but i have to remember to myself that social media is exactly the same as it's always been it's just a version of our lives that we're putting out there for other people so we can gain a response from someone a positive response that is such a good and interesting answer, Jade, because I don't think we think a lot about where we get our confidence from. So it's not just that we're not going out and getting those connections and those collaborations and not getting to do the thing that we love. It's that it actually is a big part of our self-esteem. When we go out on stage and we have a good gig, um, that's the thing we're good at. And then we go home and go, well, I'm good at that thing. So I've been feeling a bit low about something else or, you know, the, you know, my relationship's not working out or I'm single or I'm this or I'm that. I get my confidence here. And so, as you say, you go into that meeting, you think, I nailed that meeting. And, or they said, oh, we came and saw your show. We loved your show, whatever it is. And for everyone, that'll be a different thing. But if suddenly someone's pulled the plug on where you get your confidence, you then have to sit at home and build your own confidence, which is probably quite a good strengthening exercise for us. But you're right. We may erode the, the strengthening work we do if we then are spending that time instead of going in and having that interesting meeting where we're coming up with ideas and we're standing on the stage and everyone's enjoying the comedy we're doing and if instead of that we're sitting there just looking at other people's best bits everyone's highlight reel we're going to start to feel i i don't know what i am anymore and i this was a really strong feeling i had at the beginning of this which is and it was a wake-up call to be honest who am i and I don't feel like this now, I've settled into it. But at first I was just like, who am I if I'm not rushing from a meeting to a show to an event? Who am I? And suddenly someone pulled the plug on everything I do. And I went, oh, I don't actually know who I am now. And that was a, that's a resting. And I think the pace of life we've been keeping up is not healthy. It really, it really isn't. Go on. And now, and now something has made us all stop. And it's made us all actually all the psychotherapy I had, all of the all of the memes I've read, all of the all the comforting conversations I've listened to on podcasts or the grief cast episode I did. All of these things mm -hmm. that I that I was talking about that I've developed now have to be put into practice because now all of the stuff that I I support, which is like in my show that I, I did this year, my show that's on uh, my serious black jumper show. At the end, I say that confidence, mm -hmm. the only way you can get confidence is by going through something and coming out the other side. A stronger person and now that i have to put in practice so i'm now having to preach i have to what's it called what's the expression practice like? what you pre preach practice what i'm preaching and that is that is where we are now all of us all of the stuff that we've done to protect our mental health all the stuff we've spoken mm -hmm. about all the things that we've learned it's now that we're having to put it into practice and that's yeah we have to apply it yeah and see if it's there somebody's just asked if i have any tips for confidence i've two chapters of my book are on confidence um and can i just say to you if it's on it's on e it's on um the internet it's on an e an ebook got to sound like a grandmother it's on an e it's an ebook uh it's a real book it's an ebook and it's a it's a um a, uh, an audio book if you person who asked if you can't afford it 
can you slide into my DMs and I'll get you a copy? Um, there's two chapters on confidence. And, but look, when it comes down to it, when all of this is pulled away, we, a lot of the stuff we tell ourselves, actually, what Jade's saying is right. We're not necessarily doing it. We're living with these other tent poles, which are, are normal. Of course, we want to be validated by the outside world and find the thing we're good at. That's, there's nothing wrong with it. But I think it is building muscle. It's building core strength for if I just have to sit alone, what am I? Who am I? It's, it's not bad for us, as awful as this virus is and as tragic as it is and people are losing their lives. So I don't want to be, oh, but I'm working out every day. Like, I don't want to be that person and I don't feel like that. I wish it would go away tomorrow and I would charge around London, not even taking time for myself if if all of those lives could come back. But in terms of what we can do in the interim, working on ourselves is not, is not the worst thing we could be doing with this time. What we're doing for each other is we're protecting the, the vulnerable. So we're, the reason why we've locked ourselves away is because we're protecting vulnerable people. And that's what we all want to be is compassionate people. And that's why we're away is we're trying to protect our elderly and we're protecting people that have got in compromised immune systems and all of that. And that's why we're doing what we're doing. So as much as I, uh, I'm worried about um, my mental health and how I feel about stuff. I also know that, the, that I'm staying away from my mum because she had pneumonia two years ago. And if if we mm -hmm. if I give her if I get, make her sick, then, then then she'll die, and I don't want that to happen. I I've got this thing that I I read out in my um in my show that I was on tour with, and then this all happened. Mm -hmm. But uh, there was a conversation that I had with a 93 year old um, woman who is the grandmother of my boyfriend. She's called Doris. And I just want to read you something. So this was in the show, but actually mm -hmm. quite relevant now. But I asked her, I used to, she's not very, she's, all her, everything in her brain is fine, but her legs don't work. And so she sort of lies in a bed all day long waiting for people to visit her. That's mm -hmm. what her life is now at the age of 93. But she's been single for 50, 50 years because her husband died early and she's always been fiercely independent. And when I was in there, I was asking her loads of questions about stuff and she started being really insightful. So I, um, I sort of recorded her, but I wrote down something she said, and I, I just want to read you what she said. So I said to her, what do you worry about? And she told me that she worries, she worried about the youth. She said, when we were young, we were all mending ourselves. Oh, she said, when we were young, there was one enemy. We were all mending ourselves, Jade, united in our trauma, living on tinned meat. And I worry that the kids today are trying to find their identity by creating enemies everywhere and manufacturing trauma. And actually, they won't be able to cope when they're my age and all your friends have died. No one takes photos of you anymore or even listens to you. And I worry that they won't be able to actually cope when real life happens. And that's what she said to me. Mm. And, then I, and then the bit at the end, the funny bit, is I said to her, Doris, what do you think would solve this issue? And she said, a good war. Now, we're not in the middle of a war at all. But what... what I remember this part of your show, a good war. Um, but actually, hor horrifyingly, we can't see the end. We are now in a global war where the whole human race is having to come together. Um, so and also, you know... Adam died this morning. There's, you know, do you know Adam Schlesinger? That that um, the he was the co-writer with Rachel Bloom of all the Close Credits Girlfriend songs. He was the lead singer of Fountains of Wayne, and he wrote that song, Stacey's Mom. Stacey's Mom has got it going on. I'm in love with Stacey's Mom. He was such a talent. Um, I didn't realize, but Sarah Silverman posted that they were writing a musical together. It's, uh, it. He was a really talented man and much loved, an incredible collaborator, and often would collaborate it seems like with women who were like the star face and he, what a, an incredible guy. And um, I met him once backstage at Rachel, Rachel Bloom's show. And uh, he just, I can't even, I just can't even believe it because, and it, it doesn't seem like he had any underlying health problems. He was, I mean, maybe he did and he didn't know, but we don't know who's vulnerable. That's the thing. He was only 52. No. We don't know who's vulnerable. You don't know. You might be vulnerable, but you don't know. When you're wearing your high risk jumper, is that because you're high risk or is yeah, that? I'm, I'm, as, I'm asthmatic. So I am, um, I'm high risk. That's why. I've, so my friend Polly, she's got a, she, she makes jumpers and stuff and she made one for me, which is high risk. Uh -huh. She doesn't sell it. She, she, she didn't want to profit off of this, but she made it for me. So I, so I had, I had a little, a little funny sort of gold and it was just a sort of friendly way when I'm out and about to tell people to like stay away. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's good. But it's, it's a real, it's a real wake up call when you hear stories like that, that you don't know who's vulnerable and you don't know if you're vulnerable. And we, 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 we are staying home for reasons of compassion, but, but don't, 
assume that if you've not been told you're high risk that you're not high risk don't assume it you know and i think you know it's it's such an extraordinary time and every day i wonder if, if this is real every day i think am i in a coma is this a coma dream am i going to wake up i had this moment the other day where i was doing personal i've been trying to do personal training on zoom i've been trying to i've been doing it jade why am i diminishing that yes, i've been doing that doing You're personal doing training it. But, and my personal trainer likes putting on like 80s dance tunes. And it was sort of like something that was, uh, works hard for a living. That's what, you know, the work, she works hard for a living. That was on. And I suddenly thought, oh, I'm going to do a quarantine montage. I'm going to get through this by montaging me doing personal training, me doing podcasts around the kitchen table <laughs> on Zoom me doing house party, and I'm gonna come out the other side of this song, quarantine's gonna be over. They've come up with a, 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 um, a, a vaccine for the virus. They've saved everybody else who was ill. I'm definitely doing a montage of this shit. I do, I have these fantasies. And then the end of the song comes and guess what? Still here. I walked around the corner to Parkway the other day and I thought if I imagine really hard, all the cafes are gonna be open, all the pubs are gonna be open. And this was a dream. This was a daydream walk. And again, I'm sad you, to report, no. You have perfectly described grief. You Interesting. Have perfectly described what grief feels like. Hmm. We should we should get Cariad in on this call because that's interesting. That's really interesting. There, you you don't want to believe it. You don't want to believe it. Is there anything you hope the human race learns from this and takes from this? I hope that I hope people realize what they have got. I hope mm. that this instead of striving to go and get something you think you don't have to sit back and realize what you do have and mm. what, what what is like what what do we have? What is it we what you know when everything's taken away, when everything's stripped away, what what's left? And mm. that that's the thing that I think that a lot of people will will you know that aren't going to be suffering from real grief which is losing someone through this virus mm -hmm. but the other people that are, are watching it realize that you know because that's the thing like when you like so my friend uh messaged me this morning so i've got upset because um her dad's not very well and he's she had to go and say bye to him oh god and um that happened today and uh and oh, jade really, i'm sorry it's not it's not i don't it's not it's not my sadness it's not i don't you know i've met him a few times but it's her it's her thing and and just made me like my mum then said to me oh me and your dad i spoke to mum later and she went oh me and your dad went out and i was like did you touch anyone did you go near anyone and then it just i i just it just made me like i just love them i just love my family and i think that's what's probably the most important thing to me is is them mm -hmm. it, and and that's that's the personal thing to me your family don't have to be your your thing that you look at and you go what do i do what do i have rather than thinking about what i don't have because i think that everyone's lived in that way like we're all you know all of us are sort of finally talking about our mental health but when we talk about our mental health what we're saying is you know what we're saying is you know i don't have something and i want to have something and that's what's causing me grief and actually we're being forced to sort of take stock of what we do have and some you know, we have we have lots there's lots of stuff we do have that other people don't. Like I've still got my dad and that's great. And that's all mm -hmm. that I'm thankful for today is that I have him. Mm -hmm. But it's, you know, it's, it's a, it's a, it's such a, it's such a, it's such a mental thing. This it's, I, it feels, it feels dreamlike. This whole thing feels, feels totally like uh like some movie somewhere mm -hmm. well you know they have made the film they made the film contagion didn't they mm -hmm. you know i completely i i when i heard about adam this morning and i was just lying in bed crying thinking this young talented man who's just gone he's just gone and poor rachel bloom who was his you know long time collaborator had just brought her newborn baby daughter home from the hospital she had this newborn baby on her chest in the, one of the photos, you know, to, and she can't go. What's tragic is, you know, and other people I know have lost people close to them. And it's so tragic because you can't do the normal grieving things. You can't go and be with the people who loved that person. You can't, 
go to a memorial, go to a funeral, fly to be where they are. You can't do any of those things. So you, and how can you believe it's real that you've lost someone when you're inside your four walls and everything else is you're just doing your daily routine? And, and I was just lying in bed. And again, it's not my sadness. You know, I, I, I you know, I, I, I don't, I do not wish to, to co-opt the sadness of people who really knew him. And, but, you know, it is a, it, it, it just made it so unbelievably real and, and, and it felt so tragic and so poignant and exactly what you're talking about, like friends of mine having to go and see relatives who are not very well, friends of mine who've lost people during this time, n multiple people, or who say, I don't know if so-and-so is going to make it and I, I'm not allowed to go there. I can't cross the border. It really, you know, my mum's in Australia. It's terrifying. And I think it's okay for us to uh, sit in that and be scared. And I be was, sad. When, when Boris, when Boris did his, um, when he did his, when he told us all what was going to happen and we were all sat there watching it. I normally, whenever I see Boris do anything, I roll my eyes and I've got some comment or opinion about mm -hmm. it. I, I just, I was in silence and I think everyone was because we realized for the first time, this is serious. This is, this is something none of us can control. It's uh, mm -hmm. anyone that thinks they have any power right now are being told mm -hmm. that they have none. Mm -hmm. You have no power at all. All of us are powerless to this invisible thing, as you said, um, that's, that's, that's here to kill us. And it's here to get rid of some of us. And that's terrifying because we have no power or control over it. And even when we get a vaccine, we still won't have any power. Over it. This, is, this, is, this is like, this is going to change humanity. And that's, that's really important to realise that this is, this is it. This is like, you know, because this is a virus. So when they create a vaccine, that vaccine will only, like, like the flu virus. The flu virus mm -hmm. is a yearly thing. So you have to get a new flu jab each year because you build up antibodies that, um, or I don't, I mean, I'm not a, a doctor or a scientist, but this is going to be, this is, this is a, a knife inside of humanity's med, uh, you mm -hmm. know, this is, this is part of this world now. We're going to have to learn to deal with it. And it's going to be, a, as Boris said, and I hate saying that sentence, but as he said. I know, I know, I know, but. Yeah, but that's where we going, are. There's going to be a lot of loss. There's going to be a lot. And there's nothing we can do about that. Um, it's just inevitable. And I've been through loss. So I I, mean, I don't know how ready I am to lose my parents, but I... I've been there and I know, I know what I, you know, I know what, I know what you start, I know where it starts and I know what it means. And I, and I've been there and, and it is, you've, it's, it's like someone just comes in and it rips, it just rips everything you know and you love. It just rips out, out of your life. And, and then your life is at that point from then onwards, everything you knew is gone and everything that you are, it starts from that point. Mm -hmm. I am, um, I, I hope that, all of the wonderful ways in which we've been able to communicate our feelings over the last five years, especially with things like podcasts and all of that and the communities, especially like the community that you've built with Guilty Feminist. And like, I will say this now, Deborah, but when I turned up to the Royal Albert Hall to do the Guilty Feminist, I have always been the type of person that's never, I've never wanted to be a part of a big group of people because I always believe big groups of people make silly decisions like Nazis. And so I've always been sort of, because I, I grew up when I went when I was at school I was always sort of slightly unpopular so I was always in the background always looking at other people and sort of studying stuff and I sort of turned up to anything when there's big groups of people together all thinking one thing quite cynically and I sat oh, and yeah. I was at the um and I sat and I was there and I was there when Jess Robinson sang that song oh this, wasn't that this beautiful is, this is the sound of my voice and she sang oh. it in her different voices stunning and then and then she and then she sang it in her voice but then she made five and i still get emotional talking about it mm. she made five thousand people stand up in a room and they all sang that bit and it was incredible and it was the it was the first time where i felt totally not cynical at all about mm. about feminism like it's the first time i was like yes man this is this is really important so i really hope I really hope that I I hope that all of these things that we've done over the last five years, all of the, this work that we've done, all of these communities that we've that we've 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 made ourselves have, will help people. Be yeah, thank God we've built them because now we can plug in and you know the the things that you do. I I love coming to a musical so much because I just find this it's such a joyful space and it's such a free space and it feels like you really can be yourself there and you can take risks there. And I just feel like 
there are so many st stunning spaces and many of them built by women, I have to say, including Grief Cast, built by a woman. And I feel like you're right. I hadn't thought of it, but thank God we built them when we did because now we have them and no one can take them away as long as we have the internet. Let's hope that doesn't go down. Oh my God, what are we going to do? Um, we have to- Don't, no, it won't. Like, it won't. They won't let it. We, if we go, this is the thing. If, if, so this is the next stage. So if the internet gets taken away and we don't have that, what we do have is the ability to walk out of our front door and knock on the next door and be compassionate about whatever personality comes at us. Because that's what we've built within our communities is the ability to find compassion. And that compassion will help us be able to handle other people. So if the internet does go down, we open our door and we knock on next door and we, and we, and we, and we find out who lives next door to us. That's what yeah. happened. That's yeah. what it was like in the 80s and the 90s. Yeah. We, we yeah. knew more about our neighbours. And now we don't have to because our neighbours are sometimes like the people that live next door to my parents. They, Mum said, she was like, do you know what? When we all clapped for the NHS, she said the only people that didn't bloody come out were our next door neighbours. Because mum and dad live next to this hell house of, of, of full of people that are at the end it's like the at the end of the world sort of people that live there they're really like there's drugs there's alcohol like the, the area is really nice but this house next door is awful and they didn't come out and clap for the nhs and i was explaining to my mum why they didn't and um and th th that that's the thing that's why these communities we've built are great because now we find people like us but those people don't always live next door to us mm. but, but what we will do if the internet gets taken away we open our doors and all of the teaching, all the things that we've learned, we knock on next door and we, and we help and we're compassionate and all of that. Mm -hmm. And that's how, we cope. that's how we cope. I hope, I mean, this might be a really idealistic way of looking at stuff, but I, I, I have to find If we've ever needed stuff. ideals, Jade, we need them now. Yeah. Um, and do you have a feminist action that we can take today? Because I think the more we take an action, the more we think, is there anybody that you would like us to connect into, donate to, amplify if we haven't got money to donate? Yes, I do actually. Uh, there is uh, so there is a woman called Lizzie Bassam who uh, is uh, incredible, and she runs a cafe in Islington called Lizzie's on the Green. And there is a chance that um, let me just get the information up for you. So you all must go to Lizzie's on the Green. Um, it's called Bumble Loves, and it's about small businesses. And it's basically they're in for a chance to receive a five k grant. Now, I used to work at this cafe, and this cafe is in the middle of Islington, and it helps people. It helps the homeless. Uh, it helps the homeless that live in the area and it also serves goes between the middle class and the homeless but they keep their prices low and she has a real care for the community obviously Wonderful. all of this has affected her business massively mm -hmm. she doesn't make any profit i used to do her, her books the girl makes no profit she does it out of love and she looks after so many people in the area and they have this uh, chance to to get 5k grants so go to Lizzie's on the Green on Instagram and help her basically sign up to the link that's in her bio and, and basically vote for her to win this 5K grant. It will really help her. That's a wonderful thing to do. Um, can, we, can you make a little story with a swipe up and yes. we'll share that. And so after this, uh, Jade will make a story and you can find it on her Instagram. I'll show and you, you can find you it on our Instagram as well, because that's another great business from my great. friends. But I'll do, a, I'll do a whole bunch of stuff that you can And any books, TV it. shows, anything you're special, anything you want, if you just share those as stories afterwards and we will reshare them and we'll get everybody coming where you want to go. Um, finally, is there anything you're most looking forward to when this is all over? What are you desperate to, to, to see, eat, touch? Who, anything you're desperate to do? I quite like to do a gig. I'd love to, I want to do a gig, yeah. <laughs> I want to do my show again. I'm not done with it yet. I'm not finished. I want to do um, my show, Serious Black Jumper, or The Ballad of Kylie Jenner's Old Face. It's the best thing I ever wrote, and I, and I want to go and do that again, because I'm not done yet. So Wonderful. That's and everyone should watch that. And in the moment, you can watch it as an Amazon Prime special. Amazon Prime, Serious Black Jumper, Jade Adams, go and watch it, and you'll feel it's about confidence. The whole thing's about Great. confidence. Great. And, and uh, every single day, our um, amazing people, Hannah at the merch store, makes a on, print on demand t-shirt based on something that our guest has said. Uh, I think some people here are, are suggesting sexual evenings. Uh, um, yeah. And it's a stay at home t-shirt and the profit, the merch store take no profit, all the profit goes to the artist, in this case, Jade. Um, so you would get the profit because Jade can't gig at the moment. So 
uh, this is uh, one way of getting a little bit of income coming in. So if you'd, if you'd like one, if Jade, do you have anything else that you've said that you would, uh, that you think you would most like a t-shirt to be made of? Or if anyone would like to make any suggestions below, uh, please, um, we could, you could, you could, uh, people are saying I'm high risk. So we could have a, a copy of your shirt. Hi, um, Rick. High risk. High risk is quite good because it's sort of after this, it's sort of like, hey, I'm high risk. It, it could also mean you're, you're in danger of being overly feminist. Um, <laughs> I mean, it means loads of things. It also means to tread carefully, you know, you're not, I'm yeah. not someone you can take, I'm not someone you can take the piss out of, you know, that's what I, I think it's, it's power for me. It's a powerful jumper. Wonderful. Okay, so maybe high risk. Um, somebody's asking for yesterday, one of yesterday's slogans as well, which is life has been cancelled, which I think I said, nice. maybe that could be my shirt. But, um, and, uh, but yeah, high risk, I think is very good. So Hannah will make a decision. And then I'll send the copy to you. I'll send what the, the print to you and you can okay it. And then it'll be available in the merch store. If you go to guiltyfeminist.com, you can click through to see all of our merch. Uh, buying our merch or signing up to our Patreon really helps the Guilty Feminist right now. Do you have a sort of Patreon or anything like that? A coffee or anything like that that we can contribute to? No, do you know what? I do you know what? I am I I'm going to be fine. But what I would really like everyone to do is to go and help Lizzie at Lizzie's on the Green. I need anything you want to give to me, I'm gonna push it back onto the people. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it back. So a anything you give to me is gonna to go to my friend Lizzie at Lizzie's on the Green and then also my friend Polly's shop little bit margate which is where she does all of these there are two Wonderful. friends of mine that have had all sorts of mental health issues and they went and saved so saved their lives with these shops that, that really sort other people out please go I'll, i'm going to push it all back onto them so anything you thank can, you jade for people that is incredibly ge generous and if you can make stories of where we can get um of, of lizzie and all of that stuff i'll share all of the stories um but you can go to jade adams instagram um, or you can look at this one at The Guilty Feminist and you'll be able to see where you can do and uh, watch and donate to and amplify all of those things. Remember, if you don't have any money, that's no problem. Lots of your friends have much more disposable income than they've ever had because they're still working a full-time job and they have nowhere to spend any of their money and they may give if you can't. So amplifying is as good as giving. Thank you so much, Jade. You have been a an absolute delight. It's been lovely to cry with you a little bit and sit yeah. with you. And uh, this will be up on Stories for 24 Hours. Then it's going to be up on YouTube. Uh, tune in tomorrow, everybody. Um, tomorrow's guest is Sindhu V. Oh, and... my God. She's, she's so amazing. So amazing. And next week, we've got all sorts of wonderful guests, including May Martin and Ashling B. So I'll put up the full list tomorrow. So uh, please tune in six o'clock every day. And if you could uh, share and tell other people that this show is happening, it's called The New Normal. And uh, we are the Guilty Feminist Jade. It has been an utter pleasure. You've done a you do a wonderful thing and continue to do a wonderful thing, Deborah. I'll, I'll, I'll always love you same and we'll always have the Royal Albert Hall even if we're never allowed to assemble again it we will incredible. always have the Royal Albert Hall we did it high five bye my love bye love you love you all